Colorectal cancer is third in both incidence and mortality. It is a very big deal, and I'm not going to be able to teach you everything that we know about colorectal cancer in this video. What I'm going to focus on instead is the classic presentations you're going to see for colon cancer, how we screen, how we follow up colon cancer, and then talk about some of the named diseases you're going to have to know and identify for your test. Let's start off with just regular colon cancer. This is colorectal adenocarcinoma. The pathology of this arises from a premalignant lesion. That is the polyp. Now, you probably learned a lot of stuff for step one in regards to different genes. You really don't have to know the genetics of colorectal cancer. It's more important about knowing who to screen, when to screen, and when to survey or screen again, more so than it is remembering all of the pathways you learned for histology and pathology. Just knowing that the polyp is premalignant is sufficient because if you take the premalignant lesion out, you prevent cancer in the first place. And the things that lead to this premalignant lesion are going to be age, generally greater than 50 years old, alcohol, smoking, obesity, and processed red meats. But there's another way that cancer can develop in the colon, and that's through increased inflammation. So if you see someone who has an inflammatory disorder, like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, or primary sclerosis and cholangitis, these people need increased surveillance and, of course, genetics. And we're talking about the familial syndromes here. We'll talk about the familial syndromes at the very end. A patient who's got colorectal cancer is going to present in one of three ways. The way we want them to present is an asymptomatic screen. That is, they get a colonoscopy and we see a polyp. So knowing the differences in polyps is going to be really important also as you interpret the results of colonoscopies. There's two types of polyps. The ones you want to have and the ones you don't want to have. The ones you do want to have, the good ones, are going to have this stalk. They're called pedunculated. That's good because the endoscopic procedure you're going to do is essentially tie a little loop around it and pull really hard. And if it's pedunculated, pedunculated like this, you know you can get around it and get all the lesion out. If instead it's sessile, that's the bad one, you don't really know where it began and where it ended. And you won't know if you got it all out until you get into pathology. And so this one you're reasonably sure you got it all, this one you can't be sure. Other things that make a polyp good are going to be tubular histology and small. Other things that make polyps bad are going to be villus and large. Large sessile lesions that have villus histology or low-grade dysplasia are bad. The ones that are pedunculated, small, and tubular, adenomas, good. This is the way you want people to present, that is, with the asymptomatic screen. But not everyone will present this way. Other things should tip you off. It says, ah, this person might have colorectal cancer. If you see iron deficiency anemia in any man or any woman postmenopausal, women who are menstruating have a reason to be iron deficient. Men and postmenopausal females do not. Therefore, if you see iron deficiency anemia, colonoscopy. And the third presentation is what happens when it's too late. That is, there is a luminal growth, the lumen of the colon is being obstructed, and they have full-on symptoms of colon cancer. This is going to be someone who changes the caliber of their stool, that is, pencil thin, or their alternating bowel habits, constipation, diarrhea, constipation, diarrhea, or they straight up have an obstruction. The diagnostic test of choice, regardless of what stage or where they are, is a colonoscopy. And that's with biopsy. You may screen people another way, but colonoscopy is also the screening test of choice that begins at age 50, goes every 10 years, until definitely 75, 
maybe 85, depending on their 10-year mortality. We'll talk about this when we talk about screening. The treatment of colon cancer is resection. And we hope that we do the colonoscopy, find the adenoma, get that thing out of there, and it's curative. But if it's progressed, well, then you're going to need to stage it. And a stage requires a pan-CT, chest, abdomen, pelvis, and chemotherapy, whether it's a juvenile, neojuvent, with or without surgery, it's not going to be your decision. You won't have to make that call as an M3. But what you should know is that the regimen is called full fox. And there's an alternate called full theory. Where this gets you points on the test is going to be the VEGF inhibitors, Bevacizumab. All right, so what I want you to really see from this is that, hey, if we can get colon cancer at a polyp, we can cure it, prevent it from ever becoming cancer. But the way you're going to see it is going to be the asymptomatic screen, and what do you do? Iron deficiency anemia, get them a colonoscopy, uh, changing caliber of the stool and alternating bowel habits and obstruction, that's probably too late, but you can still get in the colonoscopy. So what are the ways that you can screen people for colorectal cancer? There are a few that are out there and I want to go through each one so at least you've heard them and you know which ones to ignore. The colonoscopy is by far the best. Starts at age 50 every 10 years. You definitely go to 75, but then after age 75, you have to weigh the risks and benefits. Colonoscopy can get the cancers and it's curative, but it requires anesthesia. So beyond the age of 75 up to the age of 85 and beyond, you have to say, what's their 10-year risk? The process of going from normal mucosa through an adenoma into cancer takes about five to seven years. So doing one colonoscopy every 10 years, if you see nothing, then chances are by the time you come back, they won't have full-on cancer. And the idea is, if they're going to live 10 more years, they should get a colonoscopy. If they're not going to live 10 more years because of other comorbid conditions, don't worry about the colonoscopy. It's a long-winded discussion, but it may come up. So colonoscopy starts at age 50, then every 10 years. Another tool you can use is the Flex Sig, the sigmoidoscopy. This is done at age 50, then every five years. But it must be done in conjunction with fecal occult blood testing every three years. This is US PTF. Or you can do fecal occult blood testing every one year. All three of these are legitimate options right now. There's some other things that are coming up that people are trying out. There's this immunohistochemistry thing, which is just a better FOBT, easier to use, don't pick it. CT colonography, it's on its way, don't pick it. And then definitely what used to be done was a barium enema. And this is a great board question because it could show you the apple core lesion. And you might still see this on your test as, as a means of a diagnostic step. Barium enemas are useless screening tools because barium enemas only found these lesions at a stage three or worse. So there was no point in doing them. But because the picture is so classic, look out for it on your test. It's probably not going to be, hey, you should have gotten a barium enema to screen this person. It's going to be, here's a barium enema we have. What do you think this diagnosis is? You see the apple core lesion is colorectal cancer. Well, once you screen somebody, when do you screen them again? This is if everything's cool. What happens if it's not? Because if the fecal occult blood testing is positive or the sigmoidoscopy is positive, you send them to colonoscopy. And on colonoscopy, you find a polyp. All right. You do the C-scope, and a couple things can happen. They can be no risk. That is, you found no polyps. Awesome. Come back in 10 years. They could be low risk. High risk. And what I call mega. Low-risk patients come back before that 10-year mark, but it really is just because we want to make sure, right? Every 5 to 10 years, so come back in 5 instead of 10. High-risk patients need to come back pretty soon. That's 1 to 3 years. 
And then the people who are mega need to come back this year because we didn't get it all out. All right. What's low, high, and mega? Low risk patients are going to have only one or two polyps. And all the polyps are less than a centimeter in size. They are tubular or have low grade dysplasia. So these are probably not malignancy. You're pretty sure you saw all of them and they're not that big. You've got five to 10 years. If one's back, it won't be cancer. High risk patients are gonna be those with more than three polyps or larger than one centimeter or villus or high grade dysplasia. The idea being that if there's a lot of them, you can't be sure if you got them all. And if you missed one and it was right on the cusp of turning into cancer, you can't wait five to seven years. You've got to bring them back in one to three. If it's really big, how do you know you got it all? Especially if it's sessile. And then villus and high grade, it's too close to becoming full on adenocarcinoma. You've got to bring them back sooner. And then the mega risk is going to be those who have more than 10 polyps because then you just can't be sure if you did miss one. You could have been a full on cancer that you totally missed or piecemeal sessile polyp. You can't let that person be lost to follow up, otherwise they'll come back with cancer. All right, so I focused a lot on screening. Right, what I want you to see is you can do risk reduction with alcohol, red meat, weight. But really what we're going after is get these people their colonoscopies. You have other options. If they don't want a colonoscopy, they can't tolerate it. And then once you get the colonoscopy, how soon do you bring them back? Find nothing Q10, find something, but it's not that bad Q5, find something, but you can't be sure Q1, oh my God, what's that, what else is in there this year? Now let's talk about some of the familial syndromes that you will have to recognize by name and also by syndrome. The first one we're gonna talk about is familial adenomatous polyposis, FAP. This is caused by a defect in the APC gene I know you said you wouldn't have to know genetics, but for these, I think you should. And the way this presents is thousands of polyps, very young, cancer and death. In their teenage years, they'll have thousands of polyps. So by the time they're 20, their colon is totally polyps. They get cancer by 30 and they're dead by 40. The only thing you can do is a prophylactic colectomy. Take the whole thing out because it's the only way to reduce that risk. These kids will actually start their screening if they have the known syndrome at age 10 or 12. The next one I'm gonna talk about is Lynch syndrome or hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer. Lynch syndrome. This is a defect in the DNA mismatch repair. There's two things you got to know about Lynch syndrome. One, and I want you to think of Merrill Lynch, the CEO of a major corporation, right? CEO, CEO. These patients get colorectal cancers that are unfortunately non-polyposis, so they're not polyps. They get cancer anyway. Endometrial and ovarian. The other thing to remember is the familial situation in which you are, going, you are going to diagnose Lynch syndrome. And that is going to be in the family who has three members of their family with any of the CEO cancers in two generations and one younger than it should have happened. If you see the three, two, one rule, three cancers, two generations, one premature, it's Lynch syndrome. Three cancers, two generations, one early. HNPCC, watch out for these. There's two others that you just kind of have to know. They're sort of low yield, but know they're there because they're going to come up at, at you as distractors. It's Turcotts and Gardeners. Turcotts, I think of wearing a turban on my head. And so I get brain tumors along with colorectal cancer. And Gardner's is the other one where you have jaw 
tumors along with colorectal cancer. And then the one that throws people for a loop because it's taught in the colorectal cancer section but has nothing to do with colorectal cancer. And that is Hughes Yeager's. And the way this is gonna come up to you on your test, you're gonna see a picture, a photograph of a mouth, and there's going to be freckles, dots on the lips. It's Hughes Yeager's. Hughes Yeager's does not have colon cancer. Instead, it has cancers of the small bowel, even though there'll be polyps. They're not cancerous, but you have to do an endoscopy to find the cancers of the small bowel instead. All right, colorectal cancer, big deal, short lecture. Recognize the familial diseases, their genes, and sort of the associated symptoms, and then know how to screen for colorectal cancer using any of the preferred methods and interpretation of the results of the colonoscopy based on the number and size of the polyps. That's colorectal cancer.